Hey everyone, I'm back with another video and today I'm going to talk about another application of a diode in a diode clamping circuits or clamper circuits in short. And a clamping circuit, uh, as you can see in figure 2.8, has a diode plus a capacitor um, in it. And today, um, what we are going to do is something different. Instead of going through the theory or showing you in the lab equipment, I'm going to use a tool that is called MultiSIM. That's a software that helps you to simulate circuits uh, easily um, on your computer before you implement them in the lab. So if you're like me, you don't have access to your lab equipment right now, uh, what you can do um, to see the effect of these um, different circuits, you can simply uh, download MultiSIM and basically um, simulate the, your circuits there. In order to download MultiSIM, what you can do is just Google NI MultiSIM, go to MultiSIM download, and then just like other software, it will show you that it has two versions, education and professional. Uh, a student version of MultiSIM doesn't exist anymore and it's included in the education version. What it means is that you get, if you're a student, you need to make an account with MultiSIM, just like I did here, and then mention that you're a student, and then that way you would get up to 45 days of free license with this MultiSIM. Or your school might provide MultiSIM licensing, or I don't know, uh, but that this is um, basically, I'm using a free version. And since I'm not a student, I only have seven day of free uh, license key. So what I did was the same thing. I basically downloaded it and installed it. It would take it less than half an hour to do this. So you can do that and then play with the free version. If you like it, you can purchase the license. Once you open uh, MultiSIM, it would show up as this um, environment. You don't have to create anything or no nothing. Basically, this would show up. The only thing you would do is you can press Control S and then basically save your environment or the name of this sheet, whatever you want. So what I'm going to do is try to get this on this side of the screen and then show you the circuit at the same time here so we can see what we are making in multi-seam and it's being a little bit slow but we're getting there okay so we're going to make this circuit in multi-seam what we can do is go to place we have from left to right we have uh, an ac voltage source that has six volt peak to peak that means three volt peak with one kilohertz of um, frequency. So we go to component. If you had never opened multi-seam, this is what it's gonna show up. It will show up, um, the group would be all groups. And what you can do is to go to sources uh, or different categories to basically make it less shorter and more specified. Then what we need is a signal voltage source, AC voltage, you can place this here and then we don't need another one so we can just put this here and then we can modify the properties of this signal so um, or signal voltage basically so we're going to choose the peak value which is half of the peak to peak value a three volt one kilohertz is the right frequency for us so we're going to keep it and then we have a capacitor so we're going to go to Another group, which is basic, capacitors are there. Then this is a polarized capacitor. As the shape of this group shows, you can see cap electrolyte here, and then you can choose 100 micron. And then now you can see that the po positive polarization is a, like not toward the source. So what you can, I have to do is to flip it horizontally or rotate it, right? To rotate the component as you have it in your hand, see, it's not placed yet. You press Control R, you flip it, and then you place it. Then we have a general purpose diode. So we're gonna go to component again. Diodes are on their own category or group. Diode here or diode here. 
diet, 1N914. It's already found. It's uh, alphabetically. So if you want to choose any other one, um, basically, you can go up the list or down the list. Again, I need to flip this to make it the right polarization, just like the circuit. Then we have a resistor. So we're going to place a resistor now. So we need to change our group to basic again. And then the resistor is 100 kilo ohm. Here it's chosen. If you don't want to find 100 kilo ohm, you're up the list. Just place this or anything, basically. Then we would be able to edit it. So we're going to make that as well. Then edit this. 100 kilo. Perfect. Now all we need to do is to find a ground as well. Remember, even though it's not shown in the circuit, you always need a ground. So we go to sources, power sources, and a ground. So we place the ground here. All you have to do is connect the cables. You need you don't need to find the wires or anything like that. As soon as you go to a disconnected node, this symbol would show up and then it would help you to find the nodes and then basically connect them to other circuits. Super easy. Here and then we have another one here. Okay. So then in order, we can save this by pressing Control S. Now I want to see V out in time and then compare it to V in or V source here. So in time domain, if you were in the lab, you would use an oscilloscope. And great thing about multisim is that you can actually place an oscilloscope. You, all you need to do is to go to the right hand bar. You can see different symbols of lab equipments here. And the fourth one down from the list is an oscilloscope. So I want to see channel A to be my voltage source here. If you click on the on the screen anywhere, it will show like it would stick to that point. So you can basically shape your wires better. And here I'm just copy pasting the ground and connecting it to the negative polarization of my oscilloscope, just like you would do in the lab. Okay, that's it. That's that's our circuit. Now it looks weird because I zoomed in. Okay. Now all we need to do is to run it. I'm trying to figure out why it's not zooming. Okay. We can run it. It's not going to show anything unless you go and double click on the oscilloscope. Now on the os oscilloscope, you would see, you can kind of see two signals. You can zoom in a little bit by decreasing the scale here. So you're like, oh, okay, which one is what? Basically, channel A is our V source, VS source which is a sinusoidal signal with without any DC value. So it's going to be the bottom one that is going through the, the zero DC value. And the top one is basically the one that is adding the DC value. You can stop here, basically, just so that you can freeze the screen. And then you can see that there is a slight difference. Um, well, there is a big difference in the DC value here and uh, of the signal. So we added a positive DC value to this uh, signal. Now, this is a five volt. So if you go two volt here and then two volt here, you can basically see how much is this DC value. So it's about, so the bottom one has a D zero DC value. So the top one is about here. So a slightly more than one volt and what other the other experiment that you can do just before I go through that let me let me show you something else channel A and channel B they have you can see by default DC is chosen on each of them if you go to on AC 
what it would do is it will remove the DC values of these two. And then you can see that they overlap. So the only difference between these two voltages is their amount of DC value, you see. Once I go to the DC, just like a real oscilloscope, it would show me the, time, the signal in time domain plus its DC value. If you press AC, it would remove the DC value. So you want to keep it on the DC value so you can notice any difference. So with this polarization of the diode, with this polarization of the capacitor, we added a positive DC value to our signal. Super easy. Now let's see if we can basically try to do this um, to add a negative value. Okay, I'm gonna use zoom area here. Hopefully that would, that's not useful. <laughs> it's too zoomed in. Okay, I thought the area would be zoomed in. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna go. Okay, it's a little, it's being a little bit stupid right now. It's easier. To work with it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is flip the polarization of this diet. I don't know why it's acting up like this. So let me let me just do it like this. Maybe it would zoom sheet. No, nothing. Okay, zoom out. Okay, that's better. Usually the in, on your touchpad, you can kind of zoom in and zoom out. Okay, we are gonna we're gonna remove this one, and then remember that all of the components you added. Now I deleted it, but all of your components that you already have in your circuit would be here. So you can kind of like go here and um, instead of placing a, a component again, what you can do is just to go here and place it from that easy access bar basically. So I'm gonna try to delete this one if it gets deleted and then, but the component has to be in your circuit. If you remove it, then as you saw, it will be, get removed from this list as well. So I flipped it. Now we're gonna run it again Again, remember, you have to double click on the oscilloscope. Now we added a negative DC value. So you see how the polarization is making, the polarization of the diode is uh, important in like what type of DC value you're adding because now channel B compared to channel A is shifted down, meaning a negative DC value was added. So, that's it. Uh, you can try to simulate this or simulate the diet clipping that we had in this um, previous video. See if you can try to get the same results that we got from theory in your simulation tool. And yeah, have fun with it. Talk to you guys later. Bye.